Hello all YouTubers, I'm The Weather Dude, and today we are talking about Tropical Storm Epsilon in the Atlantic that is going to become a hurricane as it passes through Bermuda. Stay tuned and enjoy. If you'd like staying up to date with the latest weather forecasts and updates, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Let's see how fast we can get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, to help this video's performance very much, please consider clicking the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, please consider watching the whole video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So yes, we are talking about Tropical Storm Epsilon today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. Let's see if we can get to 25 likes. And also leave a comment down below. How strong do you think this system is going to get? Who do you think it could potentially impact? There's really, I mean, oh, uh, obviously leave a comment down below, but the one place I'll probably get, has the best chance to get impacted is Bermuda, right? As potentially hurricane, I may not be a direct hit on Bermuda, but yet still, it was gonna come, it's gonna make a very close pass to Bermuda. We can still see a lot of waves, even some rain bands coming through. As you can see, this storm has a huge wind field already, right? I mean, you can see anywhere shaded in orange is where we're seeing tropical storm force winds right now. All right, and the storm only has sustained winds of 45 miles an hour. It is not moving, it's currently stationary moving. But it's on what we call that like north trend. Like it's moving, it will be moving northwest, north and northwestward, but it's not moving at all right now. All right, again, winds of 45 miles per hour, and there's our track coming right through Bermuda. And if it, if the wind field does get pretty big enough, we see some strengthening. Potentially, we can see some um, bigger waves along the East Coast, but no, no direct impacts at all for the Eastern Seaboard. All right, so probability of tropical storm force winds for Bermuda. All right, there is a 60 to 70 percent chance we can see tropical storm force winds for Bermuda. All right, and just to your east, you got that uh, red shade, which means 70 plus percent chance of seeing tropical storm force winds. All right, so now we're going to go to wind speed probability. We're going to go to hurricane. Bermuda does actually have around a 20% chance to see hurricane force winds, so it is not ruled out for hurricane force winds either for Bermuda. All right, and again, the storm track, again, there's your very big wind field. I mean, to scale, it may not look that big, but I mean, let's put it this way. That wind field, I would say, is probably about as big maybe as big as the state of south carolina almost all right if, if just by just by uh, uh winging it here but like by eye i think that wind field is pretty much just as big as south carolina so that's a pretty big wind field all right so oh my goodness why is it zooming in so much all right so the storm will be moving northwestward and by maybe as early as when you wake up on the 21st which is in two days it might become a hurricane uh, at 2 a.m it's gonna be 70 mile an hour tropical storm with winds gusting to 85 miles per hour all right, now right as it's passing through Bermuda, which is right about here, as you can see, it will be a 90 mile per hour hurricane as predicted on the 23rd at 2 p.m. with 90 mile per hour winds and winds of 115 miles per hour, which is category three wind gusts. All right, obviously the sustained winds are only cat are category one. Then holding its 90 mile per hour wind strength through 2 p.m. on the 24th. And it won't be moving all that fast really either. So key messages, there's one key message. Epsilon okay, is forecast to be at hurricane strength when it approaches Bermuda this week. All right, it's too soon again to determine the exact track and intensity, but there could still be some big impacts. Wind, rain, surge could impact Bermuda, even if it even if this doesn't pass directly over you. All right, so if you live in Bermuda, definitely monitor the progress of the storm. And if you live along the East Coast from Maine to Florida, uh, especially because it's pretty much as close as uh, proximity, like as close as past, it will be. Um, making its closest pass to the Carolinas, like the Outer Banks, since you guys kind of like stick out the most. All right, besides like New England, you guys stick out the most. So when it makes that closest pass to Outer Banks, you guys might be the target for the wave action. All right, out of, out of the Eastern Seaboard. So Eastern Seaboard, you got to watch for the waves. Bermuda, you got to keep an eye for it, the wind, the waves, and the surge, the more, uh, the bigger impacts. All right, so how does this thing look on satellite? It just developed, and really, you can tell it's really not moving anywhere. I'm really surprised it actually didn't become a subtropical cyclone because it looked a bit disorganized, but it's never got that rotation. It almost looks like a nor'easter almost. All right, you got that really enhanced convection on the northeast side. I will say that. You can see all this. Let me erase that. There's all that convection on, on the northeast side there. You do have some dry air getting kind of, it's kind of like the storm's like ingesting it. It's breathing it in kind of like, kind of like we breathe in uh, smoke sometimes, like wildfire smoke. All right, that's what this storm is doing. It's breathing in dry air. Um, and there is a, a band developing to the uh, south as well. 
All right, so that's what it looks like on satellite. It's impressive, but at the same time, it's actually this is actually what it kind of like what a subtropical storm would normally look like. All right, surprise again, it's not a subtropical storm. Now, winds are 45 miles an hour, but pressure is going down pretty far. All right, 998 millibars. Normally, wind speeds with 998 millibars storm be like 50, 60 miles per hour. It only has 45 mile per hour winds, and the pressure is already this low. All right, so there's, there's some pretty strong wind gusts probably as well. And your radius of circulation and maximum wind are pretty high as well. So again, this storm has a pretty big wind field. All right, so here's our ship's diagnostic message. And as you can see, shear should be remaining pretty good through the next five days, right? Nothing getting above 15 knots really, except for right now. But then over the next week, shear is just going to go through the roof. All right, but I think our biggest problem here for strengthening is not going to be the shear, well, possibly the dry air, but more so the sea surface temperatures. Right now, the sea surface temperatures where the storm is is barely 80 degrees. All right, and by five days, six days, even seven days, look at this. All right, sea surface temperatures are going to drop well into the 60s. All right, so that's not good for development at all. That's not even good for helping the storm maintain its strength. That's going to actually make it weaken. Um, storm speed right now, not moving at all, but storm speed will be getting gradually higher through the next five days, maybe about 10 miles an hour. Then by about a week out, it could get to like over 30 miles an hour. And that's when it's like straight booking it, all right, from that point. Heat content, like obviously the warmest sea surface temperatures are now, so heat content will be 16 to 25, not too bad. But over the next week, we're going to lose all the heat content, all right, the sea surface temperature is going to go down, wind shear is going to go up, all right, and then the storm is going to start moving faster. So, I think it's going to probably get to about a Cat 1 hurricane as of now, maybe a very weak Cat 2 at best, but I chances of that right now aren't too high. And then from there, it may start to weaken or become like a post-tropical cyclone. All right, so coordinates, 55 and a half degrees west and about 25 and a half degrees north. And we have our storm track right here, again, just in case. Again, I set this up like five minutes ago, but I want to refresh it. There we go. All right. Again, moving northwest, then passing Bermuda, and then kind of like making a hook to the east or northeast direction. I think that's what a lot of the models are saying here. Here's a GEFS model tracks. Now they, now normally I like to say look at these just for the track, not the strength, because the strength is a little bit like inaccurate with some of these ensembles. But actually, it's pretty accurate. All right, it could strengthen even more. But like I said, the strengthening that you see, like like where I just outlined in black, that doesn't mean it's like getting stronger as in hurricane terms. That means the winds are going up. But it's probably going to be a post-tropical cyclone by that point because the latitude is so far north. So yes, the winds could be strengthening after it passes Bermuda and once it w makes its way to the north. But it's going to lose its tropical characteristics because the water is just too cold. All right, so hopefully that makes sense because sometimes post-tropical cyclones like like Sandy, Sandy made landfall as an 80 mile per hour like post-tropical cyclone. You might you might have thought that's a Cat One hurricane. It is, but at the same time, it didn't have the organization of a Cat One hurricane even though it had the winds of a Cat 1 hurricane. Still a very de devastating storm. So that's what I'm talking about here. All right, so GEPS model tracks, kind of like the same thing, passing th through Bermuda and then making a track to the north and east, uh, like paralleling Newfoundland and um, coastal Canada. Then we have our intensity guidance. Again, majority of the models make it a Cat 1 hurricane at some point. I definitely agree with that. Um, one model makes it a Cat 2 and even more a Cat 3 hurricane, but that's only one model makes it... Um, two models make it like a near Cat 2, but most models are sticky to like upper TS or maybe even the Cat 1, which I definitely agree with again. So here's a GF, GFS model, and look on the right side of your screen, that's so where you'll find a storm. Alright, look at 2 p.m. on Wednesday though. Pressure down to 978, it looks like it's doing some decent strength thing. Alright, sadly it was, acting, it was acting up a little bit when I zoomed in on the storm, which is why I have it zoomed in like this. Um, there's Bermuda right there, alright, and there's the low sitting off to the east, alright. So making it very close past Bermuda, but the wind field could be so big. I mean, it's look at Bermuda. They're still getting rain from this. The storm is very large. All right. So Bermuda could get some rain. And then look, look at this. Look at this last minute maneuver to the west right there. All right. And that's where Bermuda could get to that back end with some heavier rainfall. All right. That's certainly possible. That's where it makes it like its peak strength. Then it kind of kicks off to the north and east. Strengthening in wind speed, but losing that tropical, those tropical characteristics as it moves to the north and east. All right. Again, tropical storm force winds right now, all right? And then you can see on the very northeast corner, you can see some hurricane force winds, all right? So this is going to, I wouldn't say it's going to strengthen very quickly because I don't think it's in a rapidly intensification environment, but not like not like Delta in any way, but it will be strengthening to a Cat 1, Cat 2 um, if it's lucky. And look at that back edge of the storm system, all right? Bermuda getting those winds of 50 miles an hour plus. And if you look at the cyclone of vorticity signature scale, 
you can definitely see there's a storm coming very close to Bermuda. Most of that energy, again, coming right around very late Friday into early Saturday. So that's the time where Bermuda is going to get the worst of it. So I'd say Thursday is definitely your day to prepare uh, in Bermuda. Actually, really Wednesday because late, late Thursday might start to get some of the action. All right, let's move on to our gem model. All right, so here is the gem model. And right now, they don't have the storm very organized at all. All right, but then eventually we'll be getting some strength, but look at look how high the pressure is. Remember, higher pressure, uh, less winds. GFS had 970 millibars. This has 990, so definitely a lot weaker of a storm here. We got some heavier rain on the northwest side, which could maybe graze Bermuda, but they're not really calling for a direct hit either. All right, and really not quite as strong. I mean, still gaining some strength, but I don't really think it's going to be near a hurricane like the GFS was saying by any means. So... Looking at it on the wind scale, yeah, maybe they're actually calling for like a 50, 60 mile per hour tropical storm as it makes its closest pass to Bermuda, again, with with those winds about 50, 60 miles per hour. But if you look on the cyclone of Vorticity signature, all right, even though they have a weaker storm, I personally, I think this storm looks a lot larger, all right? So when you look at this, you got your, you got your bands over here. And you got the, the storm itself is like this big, which again is probably like almost bigger than the state of South Carolina. All right, that's how big the storm itself is. Okay, last model of the day here. We have our European model. All right, gaining some strength, but notice this. Each click that I make, all right, on this map advances 24 hours. So basically one day. So basically this is 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. All right, 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. All right, now here's 8 a.m. Thursday morning, and that's 8 a.m. Friday morning. So take a look between Thursday and Friday, how how slow it moves, right? It slows down even more, which is not good for Bermuda. The wind and the waves are going to last a lot longer, all right? And then by Saturday, again, moving just as slow, and then by Sunday, it picks up speed, maybe merges with a front or a jet stream, and kicks on kicks, kicks itself on out of here. All right, so our, this is our 850 millibar winds. This is what the European model provides. So these are your winds at 5,000 feet. So these are kind of like basically your surface winds, just a bit stronger. All right, so as you can see, maybe a Cat 1 hurricane, we could be having play, but I just want you to look at the size of that wind field. All right, now the European has a wind field, I'd say as big as probably Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina combined. You might be able to throw in Virginia, if possibly. So, like, just look at this. So, the northern edge of those tropical storm force winds goes to, actually, it's not a straight line. The northern extent goes up to Virginia, and the southern extent goes to Florida. So, that's kind of like how big that wind field is. All right, I know it's a rough estimate, but that's a very big wind field. So, just keep that in mind. Bermuda could get impacted by this greatly, even if the track doesn't seem too close. And maybe, yes, even because see some winds or some waves along the east coast and some rip currents. So, thank you guys for watching today's video. Stay tuned for updates. We got some snow falling in the northern plains, so stay tuned. Ring the bell notification so you stay tuned for that video. I am Dweather Dude, signing off till next time. Stay awesome, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.